Hi, my name is Rod with PSI Systems and today we're going to walk through the components on the Ecos 7000 environmentally clean operating system trailer unit. I'm going to start at the front of the unit where the power station is at and talk a little bit about the components of the trailer. When unpacking this unit you will see that the tongue is a swing away tongue which allows for security and safety and storage in a smaller location. When unpacking the trailer, the operator simply needs to pull the keeper pin and swing the tongue into position, locking it back in with the keeper pin and the safety pin. The Eco 7000 comes with safety chains to hook to the vehicle and it comes with a electric breakaway braking system. Both axles, 3,500 pound axles, are fitted with brakes so for security and safety. It also comes with a uh, plug for the lights, for the uh, brake lights and tail lights on the trailer, and a swing away jack. On the front of the trailer, the operator will see that there is a spare tire mount with a spare tire, dual axle trailer, when unpacking the Eco 7000, it's very important to first go through and tighten all of the nuts and the bolts around the unit. During transport, occasionally nuts and bolts can come loose. It's very important to double check all of the nuts and the bolts. I'm going to start with the uh, power skid at the front of the Eco 7000 to access maintenance and service to the power skid. It's simply the removal of eight screws on the center panel at the front of the unit. Once those are removed, they can be lifted and set aside and the operator or the maintenance uh, individual can have access to the pump to the Honda GX660 gasoline engine that drives the pump and the generator unit, the unloader valve, and the belts in the system. At the front of the unit there are two drain oil drain hoses to maintain the pump and the engine at oil change. One hose drains the oil from the pump, the second hose drains the oil from the engine. Also at the front of the unit behind the, the panel is important information on the Eco 7000, the model number, the serial number. It gives all the details to the gallons per minute, the pressure, as a date code, and all pertinent information. This information needs to be written down in a service manual for this unit and for warranty purposes that information will need to be accessed. So inside the panel on the driver's side front of the Eco 7000 is the storage area for the two fuel tanks that operate the power skid. The red steel 17 gallon fuel tank is for unleaded gasoline that operates the Honda GX660 engine and the black 17 gallon kerosene or diesel number two fuel operates the burner system on the power skid. Both of these tanks have locking lids with gauges that will tell how full or empty they are and both are tethered so that they are, can't be removed from the unit. It is vitally important that only unleaded gasoline be filled into this tank, the red tank, and that only number two heating fuel, kerosene, or diesel be used in the black tank. There's also room in this compartment for storage of extra items, materials, tools, or five gallon buckets of cleaning detergent. On the doors of the front of the unit, <coughs> simply close, twist a quarter turn, and lock down. There is a set of keys and a locking mechanism to lock these doors and it also comes with a second locking mechanism that can be pulled out and a padlock can be used 
as a secondary measure of locking the unit. As we move back toward the back on the driver's side of the Eco 7000, there are the dual axles, 3,500 pound axles, and the tires on both sides. It is important that the operator check the tightness of the lugs on these tires on a regular basis and check the wear of the tires on a regular basis. The weight of the trailer and transportation of the equipment can over time cause these to become loose. At the rear of the Eco 7000 wash and recovery trailer, the operator will see that there are two permanently mounted hose reels. The hose reel at the bottom is the water fill reel. This takes a three quarter inch garden hose up to a hundred foot that can be rolled out and hooked to a water spigot or water supply that once turned on will fill the two outer tanks equally on the trailer and we'll go over those tanks in a moment. At the inside of the hose reel is a locking mechanism with a ring. These hose reels can be locked so that they don't move during transport. To lock the ring, to lock the hose reel, simply pull the ring, turn it a quarter turn, and the hose reel locks into place. When the operator wants to open the hose reel for operation, simply pull on the ring, turn a quarter turn to release the lock, and the hose will pull out freely from the reel. The top reel is the pressure hose out from the power unit. Once the water has been pressurized and heated, it is pushed out to this hose reel where the pressure hose is also unlocked. The reel is unlocked. The hose can be pulled out and attached to the surface cleaner or the trigger gun and wand assembly for the operator. To return the hose, back to position there is a handle that can be turned the hose can be reeled in the locking mechanism can be set and at the base of the top reel there is a location for the ends of each hose to be attached so they do not flop or drag behind the trailer at the rear of the trailer is a gate to help contain extra cleaning equipment that can be stored on the unit, such as the flat surface cleaner, extra, few, extra tanks, water tanks, or anything that's necessary. That gate can be removed simply by releasing the keeper pin on the right hand side, lifting the gate, and setting it out of the way. At the base of the pressure hose reel at the top of the unit is a location for storage of the pressure nozzles. The Eco 7000 comes available with four nozzles. The white nozzle is a 40 degree spray, spray pattern. The green nozzle is a 25 degree spray pattern. The yellow nozzle is a 15 degree spray pattern and the red nozzle is a zero degree spray pattern. This is a great place to keep those stored. As we continue looking down through the center of the galley at the rear of the Eco 7000 trailer, on either side of the trailer are four yellow water tanks, each consisting of 100 gallon capacity. The water tanks on the Eco 7000 are plumbed in a manner so that the two outer tanks are designed to start with fresh water they are plumbed together with one line, one inch line, so that when filling, the balance of the water comes up together and the trailer remains balanced. The two inner tanks of the Eco 7000 are designed for the recovery water that is being processed through the vacuum recovery system. When the water has been recovered, these tanks can be filled. Once they're filled, they can be switched with valves to go back through the pressure washer and return back to the outer tanks. 
So the outer tanks are plumbed together as one tank. They are valved. The inner tanks are plumbed together as one tank and are valved. And there is also an option to open both valves and have all four tanks run together and fill up equally. At the front of the tanks on the Eco 7000, each of the units tanks has a clear lid for visibility down into the tank to inspect for debris and it can also be used as a fill location. The tanks can be filled externally with a garden hose or any other source and also by the hose on the hose reel at the back of the unit. These inspection ports are handy to be able to see any debris or anything inside of the tanks. At the rear of the galley is the back end of our power wash skid. This is a 5 gallon per minute at 3500 PSI pressure washer with a coil heater and a burner system that uses the kerosene or the diesel from the black tank pumped through a filter system and into the burner system that creates the heat in the coil. Below the coil and heating mechanism is a 4000 watt generator that generates the 120 volt power to run to the different components, pumps, transfer pump, vacuum pump on the trailer and the burner system of the unit. In front of the generator is the Honda GX660 power drive unit that runs the pump to pressurize the water in the system. On the side of the trailer is a battery box with a lid can be removed and the operator will need to install a deep cycle 12 volt battery system battery in that box to run the battery system. Also in front of the battery box at the lower end of the trailer behind the passenger curbside compartment is a heat transfer box that utilizes the exhaust from the engine through the box and the water from the tanks are transferred through that trans system and preheated to raise the temperature of the water approximately 15 degrees before it's run through the burner system on the pressure washer. As we move back out of the galley at curbside at the rear of the unit is the vacuum recovery system. The vacuum recovery system consists of a plastic tank to recover the water that's pulled back out from the flat surface cleaner or from a scupper at a low location uh, via a vacuum motor into a vacuum port. To access the inside of the vacuum compartment simply pull on the rubber keepers from the tabs and there are two handles available to pull up on the lid of the vacuum unit. When the lid comes out there is a filter sock. There is a 80 micron mesh filter sock that catches the heavy debris that's being picked up first as a pre-filter for the vacuum system. This sock will need to be pulled out occasionally and cleaned, can be dumped out and washed out and needs to be inspected on a regular basis. It will plug and blind and when it does so the unit will shut down. To remove the sock simply pull the ring off of the keeper. The ring, the bag can then be emptied and it can be rinsed out and then it can be replaced back on and inserted back into the tank. Once returned, make sure the suction cap is tight and sealed and return the keeper mounts. Also inside the vacuum recovery tank there are two float switches. There's the upper float switch that turns upward and shuts off the vacuum when this tank 
gets full of water so we do not continue to suck water up into the vacuum pump. At the bottom of the tank, on the left hand side, is another float switch that operates the transfer pump. When the transfer pump is turned on to transfer water out of this tank through the filtration system and back into the center tanks on the machine, that float switch will turn off the transfer pump when it runs completely out of water in this tank so it doesn't dry, uh, run the pump dry. At the back of the Eco 7000 wash unit, there are two filter cartridges, a 50 micron mesh cartridge and a 20 micron mesh cartridge. Prior to operation, the operator will need to remove the canister housing from each of the filters and insert the filter itself. These can also be removed and washed and replaced and reused several times before they need to be replaced. Simply unwrap the clear plastic wrapping off of the filter mechanism, insert it into the center of the bottom of the housing, set it below the cartridge, filter top, and insert it, thread it in hand tight. There is a transfer pump at the bottom of the trailer that transfers the water from the vacuum tank up and through the filters and out and back into the center set of water tanks on the unit. At the rear of the trailer is an optional dump valve that is available for a hose to be attached to move water to another location. In the event that the user does not want to return the water to the inner set of tanks, a hose can be attached, the valve can be opened, and water, the used uh, water, recovered water, can be then be moved to another location. When operating the Eco 7000 and wanting to return the recovered water back to the trailer unit tanks, keep this valve in an upward position. Finally, at curbside, at the front of the Eco 7000 trailer, is the control compartment that houses the controls. It, control, it houses the key for the engine start for the Honda GX 660, an hour meter that tracks the total number of hours that the unit has been operated. There is a choke available to start choke the engine to start when cold once warmed up can be returned to the normal position. There is a burner switch when put in the on position will turn on the burner when in off position the burner will not operate. When the burner is in the on position there is a thermostatic control that will control the temperature and also needs to be turned up to the desired temperature. When heat is not required the thermostat should be turned to the off position and the burner switch to the off position. When operating the vacuum at the back of the pump with the vacuum hose, the vacuum pump switch is available at the front of the unit here. This will start the vacuum and begin to recover the water. In the off position, the vacuum does not operate. Once the vacuum tank at the rear of the trailer becomes full, the on switch to the reclaim pump starts the reclaim pump to process the water through the filter system and return that water to the center set of tanks. Below the switch controls are the valve controls. The bypass valve is the valve that allows the user to bypass water from the pressure washer to either set of tanks. If in the down position the water will be bypassed to the outer tanks in the up position, the water will be bypassed to the out inner tanks. Below the bypass valve are the two sets, the two valves that operate the two sets of tanks. The inner tanks are turned on or off with this valve. The outer tanks are turned on or off with this valve. If the user wants to pull water from the outer tanks while washing, turns the outer tank valve to the on position. If the user wants to pull water from the inner tanks while washing, 
moves the valve to the on position. Both valves can be moved to the on position to equalize all tanks and water will be pulled from all four tanks at one time. Or the tanks can also be shut off separately and the pressure washer will not operate if these both are in the off position. So at the rear of the Eco 7000 wash recovery unit there's also a storage hatch that can be opened via a screwdriver with a latch and inside the storage can hatch is where the 50 foot of 2 inch vacuum hose is stored and where the suction cupper scupper is also stored. This hose can be pulled out and run to the flat surface cleaner on one end and the opposite end can be attached to the vacuum intake assembly so when the switch vacuum switch is turned on the water is recovered into the vacuum tank. When not in use this hose can be wound up into the storage compartment in the storage and the door can be return to the closed position and locked closed. Also underneath the galleyway behind the Eco 7000 is storage room for other equipment below the tanks and at the forward right side of the unit is a drain valve, a large drain valve that can be opened to drain all of the tanks simultaneously to get the water off uh, out of all the tanks at one time. At the base of the vacuum recovery tank is a filter and drain uh, uh, filter cap that can be turned counterclockwise and opened and drain water from the vacuum recovery tank. Inside of this filter is a 40 micron mesh filter screen that can be cleaned and needs to be checked on a regular basis and then returned to the filter housing mechanism. So that's the quick uh, run around on the Ecos 7000 wash and recovery trailer. The trailer comes with a manual. All of what I've gone over is uh, accessible and available in the manual that we provide with the unit. I'm Rod Billings with PSI Systems. Thank you for watching and all of our information is available in the description below.